Good afternoon, my name is Doug Phillips. I'm the Director of Research and Development for Cerebral Health, and this is our second installment on brain anatomy. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the frontal lobes of the brain. Uh, the frontal lobes, which you'll see here at the front of our brains, are the most uh, recent, it appears, to have developed evolutionarily and really have some remarkable uh, capabilities in how they um, uh, help us to think about long-term planning. Uh, it seems to be much of the locus for our creati creativity and our higher level of thinking. It helps us to think about the consequences of our future actions. And the frontal lobes uh, play various other uh, very important roles uh, to uh, human consciousness and to human thinking generally. And it seems to be one of the uh, primary regions that really separates uh, the human species from uh, various other animal species, even those with uh, fairly big brains, such as whales and dolphins. Uh, so I want to go into a little bit more detail about the frontal lobe. Um, and uh, talk about um, how we may be able to use the frontal lobes more effectively and, and uh, how they are being used to integrate various kinds of information in the brain uh, overall. Uh, the frontal lobe is also the primary motor complex and so many of our voluntary movements such as me uh, pointing in this direction uh, is a way in which the um, the frontal lobes are being utilized to uh, orchestrate and coordinate uh, voluntary types of movements. Uh, it uh, appears that the frontal lobes uh, are also the centers of the dopamine and neurotransmitter receptors that help to um, organize our thinking to some extent, uh, our attention, uh, our systems of reward, uh, long-term memory, um, uh, organization and planning, uh, perhaps even our ambition and drive is a result uh, largely of the frontal lobes. And one of the things that's most interesting about the frontal lobes, particularly for the human species, is the way in which we're able to think about the future what we're going to do with the future, how we're going to act and behave, what are the consequences of our behaviors, and certainly as we face various kinds of ecological and social issues uh, throughout the world, um, we can utilize uh, thinking uh, through the frontal lobes to try to be better figure out what are the most appropriate courses of action that we can take that are going to have the best results um, or the results that are likely to bring about the various kinds of outcomes that we're hoping for. So presumably any sort of long-term planning, whether we're talking about uh, this planning on the individual or collective level is going to be uh, coordinated uh, by the frontal lobes. And as I alluded to earlier, this is uh, the region of the uh, brain that has really separated uh, humans uh, in large part uh, from other animals and, and other mammals as well. Um, different kinds of damage to the frontal lobes can bring about uh, schizophrenia, uh, personality disorders of various kinds, and it seems that the, the um, frontal lobes may be instrumental in helping us to develop personality on some level. Uh, in a famous neurological case of Phineas Gage, there's a railroad spike that goes straight through um, the um, patient's skull, and this, um, after uh, the injury and after the accident, uh, Phineas is no longer uh, able to um, carry on in the way that he had before in terms of his job and uh, he uh, experiences or other people talk about and discuss the various ways in which Phineas's personality went through a significant shift uh, and change and so neurobiologists and neurologists began to see quite clearly how the different regions of the brain uh, affect personality, uh, affect uh, even our motivation and drive that uh, prior to this accident Phineas seemed to be very highly driven and uh, motivated in his work. Uh, afterwards he seems to um, had a very different um, change in uh, his attitudes towards work and towards um, some of the long-term plans that perhaps he had for his life. And so we are really going, going to see perhaps uh, further in uh, the neurosciences as they continue to develop and these various brain mapping technologies uh, begin to show us quite clear uh, how important the frontal lobes are uh, to long-term planning and um, also uh, in 
how the frontal lobes help to bring about creativity. Um, I, I teach a class in critical and creative thinking and one of the things we talk about uh, at quite length is how do we bring about creativity in our lives? Uh, how do we create more? Whether we're a musician, an artist, uh, a dancer, um, or uh, any way in which we may be able to express ourselves creati creatively, uh, how are these frontal lobes being engaged? Uh, what is the nature um, of the brain activity that's occurring in the frontal lobes? And how perhaps can we uh, better utilize the frontal lobes uh, to bring about uh, enhanced uh, forms of creativity and um, um, be able to create uh, significant works of art um, and even in the sciences uh, certainly as well. It uh, also appears the frontal lobes are cr critical and crucial to abstraction and higher levels of thinking. So if we're abstracting about not only numbers, but we're abstracting about theoretical possibilities, that it seems that the frontal lobes are going to be engaged in this type of activity. And so um, the frontal lobes appear to be one of the most uh, key areas for the, the particular types of thinking that we have characterized as peculiarly uh, human, and ones that uh, include creativity, uh, plans for the future, uh, abstractions of various kinds, uh, thinking about perhaps the universe as a whole, uh, thinking about, about various kinds of philosophical problems, uh, how do we um, understand and abstract ourselves from our given particular environment and perhaps think about the universe as a whole or think about the um, uh, origination of species or the origin of the universe. Uh, how do we begin to abstract uh, ourselves from our immediate environment and our immediate perceptions and think about these greater questions, our bigger questions. And it seems that uh, even now we need to abstract um, ourselves from the immediate environment and think about what are our goals for the future of society? What do we want to ultimately accomplish um, uh, here on this planet? And, and how are we going to go about that? Uh, how do we better preserve the planet and the species on it? Um, how do we better preserve our children's future? Uh, what are the different kinds of things that we can do? So the frontal lobes uh, are certainly uh, two of the most important um, brain regions uh, between the uh, different hemispheres that uh, can really help to, to change human society and to change how we think. Um, so I hope that this gives you a little bit of an introduction to the brain. I hope you had a chance to check out uh, part one. Um, I would encourage you to check out CerebralHealth.com for further information. Uh, on the uh, brain research generally and some of the uh, ongoing research that's being done in the neurosciences and neuroanatomy. Uh, I think we're going to have uh, find much more about uh, the brain in the uh, centuries to come. Uh, there's uh, some exciting new research being done uh, by Sean McCullough in brain mapping um, at um, uh, various institutes around the world. Uh, neuroscience research is ongoing and it really should be uh, quite exciting to see what we're going to see uh, in the future uh, of brain mapping in, in neuroscience.